Today we're going to be talking about Masanosuke Ono, wrestling phenom from Japan. He just won his first gold medal at the Senior World Championship a couple hours ago, and he won his first junior gold medal, junior world title, last month in September. We're going to be going over his favorite shot in today's video, but today's video is only video number one of a three video series that I'm going to be releasing within the next week, so let's get right into the video. Or score with it two times. So this is um in the semifinals against Vito yesterday, and obviously he ends up scoring from it. So let's look at what he does. He always has a lefty collar tie. That's what he likes doing. He has a lefty collar tie, and when his opponent typically collar ties back, that's what most guys do. He grabs their wrist. Now it doesn't have to be right on the wrist. Typically, it's like down on the forearm. So do with that what you will. And his footwork is the same every single time. Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit different. I need to be very slow with this. First things first, you're going to pay attention that pay attention to is the opponent's footwork. He always attacks the same side leg as his collar tie. So since he has a lefty collar tie, he's going to attack his opponent's right leg. Right now, in this example, Vito's right leg, the leg he's attacking, is already forward. You have to pay attention to these things. So look at his footwork. His feet are square. On those feet are relatively square right now. Right? He's going to step back with the same side leg as his collar tie first. He always step back in or out. If his feet are already really staggered, then he steps out. If his feet are more square, then he'll step back or diagonal. Right? He's going to step with that foot first. In this example, he kind of hops, but his left foot is still the foot that he steps back. His other leg, he just kind of steps out. And watch how he's snapping, snapping them off. Vito actually did a really good job of keeping his balance. Only one of his hands hit the mat. Uh, a lot of, most of the time, both the guys' hands hit the mat. But his snap is really well, really good. He just kind of shucking it off. And now you guys see his foot. Last time I'm gonna do it for this clip. It's square right. It's right here. He's gonna step out and back. Okay. Now this foot is gonna step back. He's gonna load on it and he's going to shoot towards Vito's ankle and land on his knee. So he stepped back with the wrist side foot every time. Does the same as that thing every time. He's gonna load up, shoot, and he always end up on his knee with the ankle. It's the same thing every single time, and you guys are gonna see it. So um, he tried he tried it against Jaguel, missed it. Like five, 10 seconds later, he did it again, right? Didn't wait very long. And this is confidence in your shot. A lot of you guys try something one time and you ignore it for the rest of the match. And now your coach is yelling at you from the corner to do it again. And I, I would never understand that, right? So, and then I, this is the second time he actually scored from in the match. Third time he attempted it. And then we're going to go through all of those examples afterwards. All right. So he scores from it. And he beat you Gulev 10 2, by the way. And he tapped Vito 12 0 for you guys who don't know. So, first example right here. He initiates the collar tie where they both get a collar tie. He has his hand on the forearm. Notice his foot. Left side collar tie. His left foot is always going to step back or out. Always. That's how he initiates it. Right before he snaps, I think that's how he loads up. Right? One more time. I know it's repetitive, but this is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Some people are already saying he may be pound for pound. So I'm trying to teach you his best shot. So I really need to drive home so you know I'm, I'm explaining it exactly how he does it. Okay, so that's his stance, right? So now his right leg, his wrist side leg, wrist control side leg, and it's just his opposite side leg. I don't want to say wrist control side leg because he can do it without having wrist or forearm control. But in these examples, obviously, he's grabbing the forearm. That's going to step back. See, that's going to step back. Very obvious that is going to step back. He's going to load up and he's going to tap this ankle. He's going to end up on his knee with his arm out. But that ankle is gone. Not there. Ends up on his knee. Okay, no harm, no foul. Low wrist maneuver. Now, again, he has a collar tie. His opponent has a collar tie. He has his opponent's wrist slash forearm, right? So let's look at what he does. I'm going to slow it all the way through in slow mode, and then I'm going to do the thing where I really slow it down. Okay. Somebody's at the door. 
So his feet are square, square-ish, right? It looks square from the angle, but that leg is kind of already back. But he's going to step it back. See that? He steps it back. He steps it back. His, his, he has a lefty collar tie, so his left leg is going back. If you use a right-hand collar tie, your right leg is going to go back first. That initiates the snap. This foot, his left side, his right side foot, is going to end up stepping back, and he's going to load up on it, and he's going to shoot towards that leg. Now, one thing I didn't point out, remember, against Vito, Vito's le right leg was up first. In the first clip against um, Yaguel, Yaguel's left leg was the one that was up first. In this clip that he scored, where he scores on them, his the leg that he um, on those attacking, that leg is behind. So it doesn't really matter which leg is in front or behind. He can hit this at any point. Very important because, I mean, that speaks to the versatility of the move, right? So he has wrist control, has the car tie. He's going to step that leg back. And when he snaps, notice what happens to that leg that he's keeping far back now, right? It comes all the way up because he loses balance. And he's able to get the ankle. And we know that he scored from here. Now, this is the other time he did in the match. Just playing it again. You guys already know he scored from here. All right, so he gets a collar tie. Notice what happens. He's going to step that leg back first. Left leg back first. Then he init that initiates the snap. He's going to step back his right leg. As he's snapping... He's going to shoot off, um, post on his right leg, shoot off of it. He's going to end up attacking his opponent's right ankle. Same as that thing. He ends up on his knee, arm is sending out, and then he gets the takedown. Before we continue with the rest of the video, I wanted to quickly plug On Your Go Academy, the number one tool in the world for learning and teaching wrestling, whether you're a parent, coach, or athlete yourself. Right now, you get access to all 10 of my courses plus access to the Earn Your Goal community where I have exclusive posts and videos. Just to give you a look into what made Earn Your Goal Academy so different is that when you click on these courses, um, you have me showing the move myself, like any instructional, but you also get videos of these techniques being used against and by the best wrestlers in the world. Also, underneath each section, you can always leave comments, questions, just in case you want any, and anybody can answer, not just me. Um, so I have 10 courses right now. I plan on adding two more in the future, a bottom course, as well as a duck under course. You also get exclusive access to the earn your goal community where you can post in there. I post in there. I have exclusive videos. Everything is organized in there. I have grappling because I have so many jujitsu guys who support the channel. Thank you for that. I'm gonna have exclusive videos. Let's say you want to learn more about top wrestling. I have tags as well to keep everything nightly, nicely organized. You can see every single post I've made about top wrestling. So I hope you guys check that out. It's a one-time payment of $100. No monthly fee, no yearly subscription. I know you guys will enjoy it, and let's get back to the rest of the video. And now in his World Finals match. His World Finals match, he initiated this takedown in the first, like, 10 seconds, right? So he called toss. Now he got to the leg, but his opponent ended up scrambling out of it. Um, but he was still able to get to the leg. Okay, short, short and slow-mo, and then really slow it down. This is the World Finals. Nobody is safe from this technique. So when he initiates this move, he's kind of already wide, right? So he's just going to kind of do like a shuffle step, but he's still stepping that left leg out. He's going to end up snapping him. His right leg is going to step back like it always does, and he's going to attack his opponent's right ankle. Same thing. This is the world final. This is the finals match at the, in his um, junior world um, championship tournament, or whatever. So when he got his junior world title, let me show it one time slow. It's the same thing every time, guys. You can rep this a hundred times a day. You do exactly how he did it. He he gets a collar tie. You see what he does? His feet his feet are kind of square. He steps it back, doesn't like it. Steps it back again, but as he's stepping back, he's loading up that snap. Boom. He's loading up the snap. So you see that foot, that left foot? Okay. That's his stance now. This leg, when he snaps it, he's going to step it back. He's going to step it back. 
That's how he protects his leg as well as he's able to get the angle because now he's going to post on his right foot and he's going to shoot towards this, this ankle. This ankle is not safe. Start, sorry if I've been saying angle this whole time. Um, it's ankle, right? Boom. Ends up on his knee. Got the ankle. Really, really easy. For him. I'm sorry. Really, really easy for him. Not for us, right? Or we'll be doing it. I'll be breaking down my own film if I, if I did this in matches. Oh, no. It's really, really impressive. And the reason why you, you have to break guys like this down is because everybody talks about the speed. And I think sometimes when we talk about natural attributes like strength and speed, um, it prevents us from really looking at the technique deeply. Just like the Muzakaya sprinter shot, right? Um... That was my. That's the very first video on this on this YouTube channel. If you scroll all the way down, and there's a technique to it. He only does it when his when his opponent snaps him in the way. There's a reason for that. Shooting off your opponent's snap is is key. Same thing with him. It's not just speed. If he was just relying on his speed, he'd do he'd just shoot and be like, you know, I'm fast on his reaction time. No, he's doing it the same way every time. All right. So play this screw again. This is at the Senior World Championships. All right. So let's look at this. His feet are already staggered. You can't step further. You can't step this left foot, his car tie hand, further back than this. So what is he, what is he going to do? He's going to step out instead. He's going to step out instead. That foot is already back. So he's going to step out. Very basic. Attention to detail. Step out. Okay, that loads up the snap. And this leg right here, his right leg, you already know what I'm about to say, is going to step back. He's going to load up on it. This ankle is not safe. This ankle is officially on those. On those, he owns this ankle now. The footwork is already there. He's about to, he's about to cut the angle, and it's over. He's going to end up on his knee. Boom. Past the ankle. And we know that he scores from this position. It's impressive, man. This is against Marcus Blaze. And shout out to Marcus Blaze, man, because that lost age well. That's 7-2. Really was 7-0, right? He got two points with half a second left. But still. I mean, not getting tech by this kid, not letting him get 10 points on you. I know, obviously, Marcus Blaze is a very competitive wrestler. He doesn't look at it that way, but the loss age well. I mean, all know is, is generational, generational talent, right? At least this year, he was in a generational run. So his feet are square. Feet square facing Marcus Blaze. What, what is he going to do? Just guess, guys. Oh, he's going to step that left leg back. Now both, now, both feet leave the map, but he's stepping that left leg back. Boom. That are you are you already see him at the very end as his foot is landing, he's low in the snap. And oh yeah, that's why I wanted to point out. He doesn't have wrist control right here. That's why I said earlier, I don't want to call it wrist control leg, just the other leg, obviously. Um opposite of the collar tie. Marcus Blaze would not give you the grip that you if he noticed that you like a certain grip and you want him to do something with his arm, he's not gonna give it to you. He's really good at hand fighting. Um, I noticed that in his matches against Jack Spores. Jack Spores always went that tricep. In their last match, he does not let, let Jack Jack Spores get that grip at all. So he's really good at hand fighting, but it doesn't matter. Ono is still able to get both hands on the mat, right? And his chest is already over his toes. So, and a lot of really good guys wrestle this way. Boom. What happened with that right foot? It steps back, right? Steps back. He loads on it. I mean, look at the flex. Look at his calf, right? He's really exploding off of that calf I and mean, exploding off of that foot. That ankle is not safe, right? Boom. Ends up on his knee, reaching out to that ankle, and then he's going to end up getting a step out. Great defense by um, Blaze, by the way. This time it worked too well, right? It kind of worked too well. But another example of his feet already being too staggered. I mean, I mean they're almost in a straight line, right? Obviously, he was in transition. But they're almost in a straight line. So from right here, you can't step back even more. So he's going to step out instead. He's going to step out instead, right? Just like a previous clip when his feet was already staggering. You can't step back anymore. He steps out instead. As he's landing, he's already preparing to snap. And what does his right leg do? Is going to step back with him. Boom. He's going to load on it. Explode out. And he's chasing that ankle, but the snap... I think this not worked too well, right? It worked way better than he expected it to. So he ended up going around and still getting the takedown. So every clip used, this isn't five years ago, three years ago. It's from like today, yesterday, or last month at the Junior World Championships and Senior World Championships. 
All know is very, very good. There's an underrated shot that he uses um, that makes him super well-rounded because he can attack both sides of the body that I'm going to do video number two on just so you guys can look forward to that because you can say, okay, what if he can't get that left-hand collar tie? Well, a lot of times when people try to stop you from getting the left-hand collar tie, they get a right-hand collar tie and, and they don't let you work underneath, right? So what does most people do? They end up settling for something else, maybe an overtie because that's easy to get. He has a, a shot that he consistently hits from the overtie as well. That's what my next video will be on. And then my third video will be on his entire offense. And I will see you in the next video.